Now to take a shower. Yeah. Kind of gross looking. Hello, this is Eric of Not Bios, and welcome to my long-term review of Dr. Squash. Mind you, I do have a limited number of products from Dr. Squash, but of course, this gave me a lot of opportunity for testing. First of all, I wanna actually go through the website because when I ordered online, it was a bit of a nightmare. So I wanna show you some details first. Did you know that Dr. Squash is on Amazon? However, is it the same valid product? The prices in Canada, at least, seem to be kind of unreasonable. So I recommend ordering direct from Dr. Squash if you're gonna get the products. Now let's continue on inside the computer. Now for a quick rundown of their website here for Dr. Squash. So we got all basics all listed here. So for products like toothpaste, deodorant, hair care, uh, soap bars. So let's say if I wanna see details of what's special about this toothpaste. They have the features here. It is fluoride free. And what about this part right here? So if I go to details, I can see that is a natural calcium based mineral identical to tooth enamel, this hydroxapatite. And if I go to soaps, we can go down and look at this. One that's been actually fairly popular among commenters is this Bay Rum. I don't know how it is, never tried it. It's nice that it tells you zero grit or if it's actually gritty. They have their funny descriptions, Island Tropics and Spices. Yeah, spice is their scent. And if I wanna look at the ingredients, it's kinda of nice that they have this here too. It tells me it contains that Chia butter, cedarwood essential oil, fur needle essential oil, but if I want to see all the ingredients, let's click right here and I can see what is in here. The soap saver, we're going to see can actually be useful. There's going to be one thing I'm going to show here right away. If you leave soap in the water, so the idea is it allows your soap to drain and not stay in a pool of water. So we got two pieces cut. One's the pine tar and one's the lever 2000. So this is lever 2000 aloe cucumber. That's the one I like to use because it doesn't dry out my skin as much. It smells fairly nice. The pine tar is more of a mild smell among Dr. Squash and is pretty my least favorite one. It has a bunch of chunks of whatever the heck it is. Some of them are pretty big. But look at that. It's like a piece of fingernail sticking out of the soap. But some people like it. The soap does work well in terms of keeping uh, getting the dirt off your hand as well as any other soap. So now what I want to do is I'm going to take both those soaps right here, side by side, and dump them in some water right here. So it's just been over 15 minutes and that pine tar is, well, coming apart nicely already. So I forgot about the soap. It's actually been about uh, 33 hours and the soap is basically mush. So you can see that uh, pine tar definitely wore way down compared to the regular soap and leaving in water. And the interesting part of these soaps is they're not made all the same. Pine tar has that textured feel to it and some other ones do as well, mind you. And it happens that uh, the Alpine Sage itself contains Shia butter, which actually is moisturizing. So you can actually have a couple different results based on which soap you're actually using. Spanification. So it's not made with the chemicals like regular soap is, it's actually made with the original process of making soap. I didn't find it really moisturizing, but at least it doesn't seem to dry out your skin like a lot of the other soaps will dry out your skin. So it leaves a lot of the natural oils, which you actually want because if you're actually drying out your skin, it's just no good. I don't know why they advertise for the commercials, talk about your balls. I don't know what the obsession with your, it's soap. You don't need to use it on your man parts, what you're just gonna make it smell nice for your, area. Don't you just want to all smell nice? Okay, anyway, I'm not sure if you guys have seen the ads, but that's what the commercials that I've seen on YouTube been about. So after 19 showers, here's the pine tar. Super razor thin. Here's an alpine sage after one shower with it. 
we can see the difference is, well, the pine tar has basically has seen its last leg and probably its last shower. So 19 showers and one hand washing to be exact. So a quick update on the pine tar. So right now we have 22 washes and one hand washing. So 22 showers and one hand washing, razor thin, but it's amazingly enough, it's still here. It's actually so thin, I'm not sure if you can notice, but I can actually see light through it. Now for those that don't know, I bought these products myself, unsponsored, no affiliation at all with the company. I went out and bought a t-shirt here so I could test different deodorants and see if they leave stains. First of all, I'm gonna test with my old deodorant, which happens to be Old Spice Swagger. So we got our old written right here. Okay, next, let's grab Fresh Falls. So I called it Fresh. a little bit of staining right there where I actually applied it already. Pine tar, I'll call that PT. So to apply some pine tar, some PT. Well, I don't like that. I didn't even wash my shirt yet. <laughs> it's already, if you're wearing a white shirt. Hopefully that washes out and doesn't stain permanently, but I guess we'll find out. Alpine sage. Okay, let's write some sage on there. Time to get that sage. Let's see if sage leaves any staining. Just put a bit of sodium, not too much. And now, let's stir that up a little bit. And put it on a cloth here. And I'm gonna basically splash it on this. So the whole idea is to actually see if it actually causes more staining over time. So now after one washing, I'm gonna try doing another application of all these scents. So my old spice, brush falls. And now the Alpine Sage. crossing between the water. The whole idea is of course I want to see if it sets in any of these. And let's rub it in a bit. That one in a bit. That one in a bit. And rub that one in a bit. So I can wash it again and see if it eventually causes permanent staining or if it'll wash it every time. The pine tar being that it actually does leave a stain might be concerned if we're wearing white clothes at least till the next wash. That's what I see so far anyways. So I've now let these stains set for about four days here. And now I'm going to check out how they clear out after a wash and see if it comes completely clean. Or if they are now set, any of these stains here. The old spice you can see is the clearest. The fresh uh, falls has a little bit of a stain. The alpine sage a little bit of a stain. And the pine tar has the biggest stain. So after a wash, we'll see how this turns out. So after only the second time of washing this, after leaving the deodorants in for several days, and of course rubbing it in, the Old Spice shows the least on the shirt. And the Fresh Falls has a light stain and 
the Alpine Sage, and the pine tar has, of course, the worst stain of all. So long-term use on a light-colored or very white-colored shirt. Well, sadly, for the deodorant, it doesn't look like a good situation. So the fact that the deodorant actually left staining on the shirt was kind of a disappointment. I can see why when looking at the ingredients, because charcoal for odor protection. Yeah, charcoal is not white. Arrowroot for moisture absorption and probiotics. Probiotics are say natural bacteria. So this will help maintain a proper um, microbiome where your, your actual underarms are because actually most deodorants actually kill off the microbiome and it's not quite the same anymore your body actually changes well I guess this gives a more healthy microbiome which is actually so you're you're getting something that's actually considered better for you because it's not all full of chemicals in terms of deodorants I still really like my fresh falls then the alpine sage is my second favorite the deodorant itself it does work nice it stops you from being sweaty it's just as well at least to me as any other good quality deodorant may be. It goes on a little bit thicker, say the Old Spice I have actually is fairly, um, applies fairly thin. Well this one you can tell has a bit of grab. It uses sea salt, interesting. Alaskan Glacier Mineral Clay. So anyways, very very different, but much more natural. So it's, I guess you could say a healthy choice if that matters to you. And of course, Having essential oils versus chemicals have a lot higher costs, especially when everything's natural, because a lot of the natural, like the actual soaps you buy and everything, it's uh, basically a race to zero, where it's good enough, but it's not natural anymore these days. So if you're looking for something that's healthy, natural, it's definitely something to consider. Just know that the deodorant might eventually, if you have a white shirt or something, or a very light colored shirt, might stain your clothes. Keep the soaps out of being soaked in the water, so if you want to put it in a thing, a soap container that has a drain, that water won't group up or clump up there, so your soap can actually last for a decent while. If you want to smell like the smell of the soap you're using, or maybe even the actual shampoo you're using, what you'll do is actually lather it on and not wash it off for about 30 seconds or so, maybe leave it on longer. Then when you wash it off, you just rinse it off and then get it out of the shower. Then you'll have that smell of that soap, whatever the scent is, on your skin for several hours. So the question you may have, are these products from Dr. Squash worthwhile? I'd say so if you're looking for a luxury product that's not uh, full of chemicals. So I actually went to West Edmonton Mall and I saw soaps that were about $9 each, luxury soap. So in Canada, these are about $9 each. And of course, if you purchase from other sites such as Amazon, just so you know, you might not be getting the Gen Wine product. What I hope for Dr. Squash is they maintain the quality and don't go cheap on the quality, unless of course you're gonna make a cheaper product altogether so they have their low end and high end and not reduce overall quality. And of course, that's one problem with a lot of different products, but of course, so far, so good. Their donors, well, really nice, chemical free. So if you're looking for something more natural, it is a worthwhile price to pay. Of course, how about the cost? Why did it cost so much? Well, for one, there's no such thing as free shipping. The cost has to come out of somewhere. And they're not Amazon, they don't have their own shipping service, so they do have a higher cost. And then they have no storefront, so that means that they spend a ton of money on online advertising. So their overhead is their online advertising. So on YouTube, I saw their advertisements all the time. I tell them a video part one, where it was basically uh, my first initial experience. After part one video, what happened is I kept on getting ads on Facebook for Dr. Squash. And of course they do have sales. So if you're on the fence about things, that might be a time to try it because a lot of this could be personal, what you personally like. So leave your thoughts and comments in down below so I can know what you like, what you didn't like. Do you like the toothpaste? I never tried it. Do you like the shampoo? I haven't tried it. It's like salon natural shampoo. It's not a cheap shampoo that way. It's all up to you what you like and what you're willing to spend on getting something more natural and something with less chemicals. Thanks again for watching and have yourselves a most wonderful day. This is not Biotech and Hardware.